On the last episode, we embarked on a journey from Africa to the New World in a global transatlantic food exchange. But the roots run deep. And now we tell you all about the peanut, as well as sweet potatoes, cassava, and yams, and how they revolutionized both West Africa and the Americas. Around 1861, a baby was born in Missouri to an enslaved woman named Mary, who was owned by Moses Carver. After emancipation, the child, now 12, would continue to work in various odds and ends jobs and work the fields as a farmhand. After earning his degree, George Washington Carver would take off for Alabama in 1896 to direct Tuskegee's Department of Agriculture after a meeting with Booker T. Washington. He would teach at Tuskegee for the rest of his life, but over the years, he would solve the problem of Southern American soils depleted of nutrients from over a hundred years of growing. Today, the term yam in America largely refers to sweet potatoes and is a common table food in the greater southern United States, but sweet potatoes originated in Central and South America. In the early years of slavery, Africans continued to revolutionize old recipes with Western New World concepts. Sweet potatoes resembled the familiar white-fleshed yams native to Africa and Asia. West Africans had always boiled and fried and roasted yams as a main component of their diet, and the enslaved in the American South and the Caribbean would sweeten and spice the soft-fleshed sweet potato. In South America, the native cassava was also used as a replacement for yams and was introduced to Africa by way of the Portuguese who brought it from Brazil in the 1500s. It took hold in West Africa as a staple crop and the African dish fufu was born. Hello, welcome everyone to our second episode of Gifts from the Ancestors. We're so glad that you're with us today and I have here Chef Air, who's our featured chef for this series. And we are going to take a deeper dive into West African cuisine. And we're going to showcase today West African sweet potato peanut stew. Yum, I'm already hungry. I know, this is such a flavorful dish. The very first time I taught it, the students thought, oh my, we have peanut butter. It's gonna taste like peanut butter because we're so used to our customs and culture. But one thing we, we learned is when you combine the tomato paste with the peanut butter, you create a natural thickener. And this is one of the gifts our ancestors had to overcome through the Middle Passage and through being enslaved in the South. Uh, and that's why we end up with our traditional roux in Creole cooking. And Chef Sherry, I noticed that, you know, a lot of, we've used a lot of different root vegetables, but it was one thing that I was always confused with, you know, is what's the difference? But is a yam and a sweet potato the same thing or? That's true. Cause I mean, when you cook with them, you know, you say, okay, let me have some yams. I'm gonna make some yams. I'm gonna make some sweet potatoes. But the one thing I found in research with the yam versus the sweet potato, the yam is more of like a tree-like, uh, type and texture vegetable. It's darker. Um, it pretty much only comes in just a few of the light colors, which is like almost a white flesh. Right. Um, and the other one is a really, really light orange. It's not as vibrant as a sweet potato. Um, and then they come from two different, you know, two different families. Whereas the yam actually comes from lilies. Oh. And the sweet potato comes from the morning glory. No, I didn't know that. I didn't either until I start looking. And then with the sweet potatoes, which you're more accustomed to in the U.S., they're mainly grown in North Carolina and Louisiana. No, all right. Yes. Um, and we use a lot of them, you know, in our staples and our pies and stuff because they're tender. Whereas a yam is is it's more starchier and it's heavier. Mm -hmm. Versus a sweet potato is tender, so that's why we use them a lot in our pies. We use them in cakes and just a lot of different things, so. And with this stew, the sweet potato and the uh, tomato paste and the peanut butter serve as our thickening agents. And then we also get a lot of nutrients from the greens and from the tomatoes. So it's a very flavorful and very nutritious uh, dish to serve. 
So you'll be fulfilled and your palate will be pleased. Yes, it will. I can't wait. I'm hungry. <laughs> Me so too. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started with some of the sweating of the vegetables. And usually we start with, you know, your base with onions, um, garlic, um, and just a little bit of ginger. And again, ginger is a... Uh, spice that's it's pretty potent so you're gonna have yeah, to use not, aromatic. yeah not too much but you still need it just for that special touch right okay so now we are ready to add our liquid which is vegetable broth and how much do we have chef we have four cups here of vegetable broth okay and uh, Chef has also combined our peanut butter and uh, tomato paste. And you see how it gets very thick and that's really fast. Yeah. It got thick really fast because that peanut butter was almost an oil. It was. Smooth peanut butter uh, with no sugar added. So it is very oily. And then we have our seasoning blend that we're using, which is ginger, turmeric, and curry powder. And Chef, can you tell me about your um, Creole seasoning? Creole seasonings. I have a couple little secrets in mind. One of the things you don't know, usually call this for paprika, red pepper, thyme, oregano. So some of the things I can, you can vary, have different variations. And the one that I vary is I add also smoked paprika. It gives it a smoky flavor. A lot of times people don't like things as hot. Mm -hmm. And with the smoky paprika, it cuts down, but you still have the flavor. So it's not as much heat. Uh, for those who don't like a lot of heat, but it uh, gives it really great essence. Nice, robust taste. All right, here's the peanut butter and the tomato paste. I tell you, it is really stiff. It is, but it you know it just blends in once it hits the hot liquid, and it forms a um, very smooth soup. Get all of that out because that's all that goodness. I don't want to leave any of that goodness in the bowl. All right, you can add more stock or you can add a little water because with all of the combined flavors, mm -hmm. it's not going to take away from awesome from your soup. And then we'll add the sweet potatoes and let that come to a boil. And our finishing touches will be the coconut milk and our greens, and then our garnish of peanuts, lime, and cilantro. And the greens, um, for a lot of people that don't know about greens, what kind are those? Those are collards. Okay. That was a perfect amount. I wonder who did that measuring. <laughs> Doesn't it smell wonderful mm -hmm. and amazing? I wish we had smell vision, y'all, because the aromas are just coming together and it's making your mouth water. Chef Air's gonna talk more about our garnishes yes. and how to finish the dish. All right. So what I have here is some fresh parsley and some cilantro, one of my favorites. I also have uh, some peanuts here. And it's basically to the consistency that you would like. I like it a little crunchy, not a whole bunch of crunchy, but I got a little happy here and I chopped up my peanuts. The final thing, uh, one of the final things we use is, you know, your hot sauce. So it was a bit of Tabasco or you just uh, sriracha, which is one of my favorites because it depends on how you like your heat. Yes. You either like it this way or you can also use what? Well, in West Africa, they like the scotch bonnet. So that's about number 10 on the on the heat scale. So if you want to turn it up a notch, go go for it. Now, how are we going to cool it off if we got it that hot? <laughs> well, uh, lime adds a nice acid blend to your uh, stew. Okay. And it just gives it a peak of flavor. Chef, I think you outdid yourself today. All right, because I am so ready to taste it. Okay. So let's lift the bowl. 
We're going to add our garnish in, yes. in our line. So we're going to add just a little bit of garnish here. So this was the cilantro and the chopped parsley that we spoke of. So we're going to just put a little bit there. And these peanuts. So we'll have a little bit of texture. Everything that you always have, you want to always include texture. Because yeah. this soup is super smooth. Okay. Are we ready? Well, let's add our zest and our lime. Okay, we're ready to dig in. Right, ready. Come on. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is so good. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to enjoy it. This will be a wonderful fall and winter soup. Yes, it is. So you can go below and subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you can reach us at giftsfromtheancestors.com. Again? What was it again? Gifts from the ancestors.com. I think they gave this to me. The ancestors keep on giving, y'all.